for you new people. I only have one rule. Everyone fights. Listen up. After fleets foul up on Clindathu, they've come up with a new plan. We're gonna clean up the outlying systems one by one, starting with Tango Urilla. Some of you are going to die, but that's a risk the Federation is willing to take. Gear up, we're moving out. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the talking Starship Trooper. Today, we're going over the TS-12 from IWI. Now, this is actually a pretty cool shotgun, and I'm excited to go over it for this video. It has some pros, it has some cons, but overall, I actually do like this design. Now, before we dive into the video, of course, if you haven't already, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. I know it is YouTube and cheesy, but it is a sacrifice to the algorithm god, a god of which who does not like 2A content on this platform. So a big thank you for doing that. If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon, excellent way to support the channel, as well as, as well as merchandise. Merchandise helps out greatly. And of course, we have to thank the sponsor of this video, which is going to be Aura. As someone who's been doxxed on the internet, your private security in all facets of life is a very nice thing thing to have, and Aura will help you get there. Aura offers a service of identifying potential threats that may happen to your identity. It helps with data brokers selling your information and data. So a big thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. It really does actually help out. So go ahead and click the link in the description and in the comment down below. There's also going to be a QR code floating around the screen here. So it actually really does help to have a sponsor like Aura on the channel because I can actually pay Savio real money instead of just sushi and Trin. Um, he has a wife and a kid he's got to look after. So it's greatly appreciated. Hey Savio, did you get that shot? What shot? Oh. One initial pro off the get-go that the TS-12 has, hold on, let me take my helmet off, I can't actually shoot with this thing on. Maybe we'll go over the setup on the second channel. What I do like about the TS-12 is its fire rate and its ammo capacity and its overall compact design. It looks like a freaking sci-fi gun, and I kind of like that about it. If you don't know me, I'm a big freaking nerd, and I like sci-fi stuff, especially Starship Troopers. So any chance I get to run around the flat range LARPing as Johnny Rico, I'm gonna take that chance. I'm gonna smoke some bugs, because only good only bugs good dead bug bug. is a dead bug. Anyway, so I do like this design. I think it looks cool. So keep in mind, though, I'm a big dummy, so take everything I do and say with a grain of salt. That's my big disclaimer. Now, I acquired the gun from Gun Zone Deals. The fine gentleman over there, he reached out, he said, hey, would you like a TS-12 on the channel? And I said, of course. And in return, all he asked was, oh, my optic's loose. My, I just discovered my optic was a little loose, but that's okay because it's a shotgun, but it's also not okay, so I guess I'll die. So he sent me the shotgun. All he asked in return was, was a shout out. So a big thank you to Gun Zone Deals for sending this over. Also sent over some shotgun ammo to run with the gun. He sent some Sterling Buckshot to run with this gun. Now, that's kind of a good detail because I saw some other guys' shotguns videos on this, and they said they had some issues off the bat with depending on certain shotgun rounds. I threw the rounds in there and the gun ran just fine. No issues. Now, one thing I would like to do is show off the fire rate and capacity of this particular firearm because it is actually impressive. Uh, right now I have 13 rounds of buckshot in the gun and I wanna show how fast I can dispense of said ammunition. Savio, you're gonna have to put a timer on the screen because I forgot the shot timer. Sorry, dog. We're going for speed and not really any accuracy. Okay. 
and she's out. That was 13 rounds, right? That felt like it. Gun hold four in each of the tubes you can see down here holds four, and then I did one in the chamber for a total of 13. Now, if we compare and contrast this to the old beloved, good old Remington 870, got one in the tube, but see how long it takes us to crank off <laughs> 13 rounds. Ooh. Oh, this isn't going well. So I think I just had a failure to extract with the 870 in the initial get-go, so let's see if she can manage to fight her way through the second round. Come on. It's a little unfair test technically. 870 is not cutting the cheddar right now. Having a little bit of failure to extract issues, which is both good and bad. Good because I now get to know if I can trust my life on the gun at the moment, which I guess now I cannot. There we go. We'll, we'll work through the drill. We'll keep fighting on. Guess I'll die, right? All right, that should have been 13 if I did the math right on my head. Dang it, Bobby. Okay, then just for the giggles of it, we'll do 13 rounds through the Olympia. I'm just kidding, I don't got all day to do that. You kidding me, dude? You get the gist of it. So shotguns are nothing new to this channel. I've had a plethora of different shotguns on, but this is the first of its kind, um, at least from IWI that I have gotten on this channel. So far, initial impressions are I like it. I had no issues off the get-go. It has a nice gas system. It is compact, yet robust, yet it's not too heavy when fully loaded. It balances nicely. So I'm not a big simp for shotguns either. I'm, I'm also not like trying to sell you this in any way, shape or form. So shotguns to me are like this very fine tuned surgical skill that have been kind of sold to the general public or this thought process that they are a layman's tool. And while that's both right, but it's also not because if you're trying to run a shotgun, how you would probably want to be running a shotgun, there's a lot of skills that go into it. If you're just bird hunting, if you think there's some crackhead breaking into your house, yeah, a shotgun's not a bad choice. But if you think there's a higher threat than just some, you know, crackhead with a knife, you know, guys with body armor, guys with different, you know, gear, shotgun may get outclassed by those rifles, which it will get outclassed in certain categories. But shotguns do have a sheer level of violence to them that is, of course, unparalleled. I mean, you go back to World War I when the Americans show up with their murder sticks, 1897, the Germans were so, like, taken back and aghast by it that they, of course, were like, hey, we got to outlaw those. And they're like, what are you talking about? You guys are mustard gassing people. Like, come on, dude. Shotguns definitely have their place. Now, if that's in the world of bolt guns, how do they stack up against in the world of AR-15s and AKs and all those other modern rifles? It's up to you. It's whatever you want to do. This is just another option and a tool that exists because guns, at the end of the day, are tools just like you. It's afraid! What's this guy doing? That's a Ford Raptor. Join the mobile infantry. Service guarantees citizenship. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. And I'm doing my part. <laughs> Now, I wanted to compare the TS-12 to, say, the gold standard of semi-auto shotguns, the Benelli M4. So we'll just shoot the Benelli M4 real quick in comparison to the TS-12, because we can. So thanks, Connell Gilbert, for helping me out with the Benelli M4 and hosting us at this range. I would say the Benelli shoots and feels very good. It feels like a classic shotgun, so if you're used to running a classic shotgun, then you will have no issues there. See how it feels compared to the new boy. Dang, I actually, <laughs> the scene's grown on me more and more. Let's see if we got our first malfunction with this bad boy. Oh, cleared it. So I will say that this gun has been, as a shotgun at least, growing on me more and more. There is definitely downsides to shotguns that aren't magazine fed. Uh, even without the stress of someone trying to kill me, I was fumbling shells trying to reload this. 
zero stress, zero issues. Me just trying to take a shell, load it under the gun, I would drop one or two. So I couldn't imagine under stress and duress. That's why I do lean towards if I had to use a shotgun using a magazine fed shotgun. Um, as well as if you're gonna be using a shotgun, pretty much your job is to always be feeding the tube like it is a high stakes game of Nerf. <sighs> so while I think shotguns are very aggro and very cool, my preferences are usually going to be a carbine. I'm that classical stereotypical gun guy that likes carbines, but don't get me wrong. If I turned the corner and I saw like someone really close to me and I had a shotgun, I wouldn't be too mad. But if I was getting shot at by someone with a carbine from far away, I'd be kind of salty. I'm not going to lie. I'd be a little bit mad. I'd be like, where's my carbine? Why didn't I bring it? But I mean, this is just the world we live in. You can't have your cake and eat it too. How did it compare to the Benelli? Well, I think the Benelli is a great weapon with a wonderful track record. It is undeniably has some wonderful service. This thing is still pretty new, not that awesome of a, well, I want to phrase, it doesn't have the service legacy of the Benelli. So it's still a little untested. There was a few hangups I had, there was some malfunctions. Um, working through the malfunctions, I cleared them relatively easy, but still that they existed. And I know other guys had issues with their TS-12 with certain types of ammo. Bow! Now, of course, the TS-12 goes great with some Starship Troopers kit. So I'm gonna be breaking down the entire kit for this video on my second channel. So go ahead over there. All the link should pop up somewhere up here if you wanna go watch that. You know what I think about when I watch Starship Troopers is how come like they don't all land with way better weapons? for fighting giant arachnid bugs. Like they were, Johnny Rico, when he got injured was melting those bugs with his shotgun. I was like, why don't you have like a bunch of drum fed shotguns that are automatic? You can just melt those freaking bugs. I bet Johnny Rico wish he had one of these. Now let's go over some of the cool features of this gun. I quickly discovered something that I like and that's with the triple tubes. The bolt will lock open to the rear and you can easily drop the bolt without even thinking about it when you cycle with the tube and it drops and you have a live round in the gun. Got him. Now that's a cool little feature that I like a lot. Overall, very modular. You have M-Lock design, a very long Picatinny top rail, and I threw on a six hour red dot, a little cheapo red dot. So you got the thread protector down here, the ratcheting on system, it seems like. Seems like it's got a nice little ratcheting system in there. And then we've got a choke in there, I believe. Definitely looks like I got a choke in there. Keep in mind, yet again, not a shotgun expert. I don't run them often. So that goes back to the grain of salt thing. Two, cycle your tubes. You have this button right here. Push it forward and she can rotate. The trigger itself is nothing too crazy. It's a very bullpup trigger, a lot of squish, and then you have that wall and then the click. So you also have an adjustable gas system. You can kind of see it's a little bit obstructed by the flashlight on each side, kind of, but you can see the low. Oh my God, I almost fell over. You have the adjustable gas system. You can see the low and the high setting. Since you get down there, crank it up or down, however you so desire based off of your rounds that you are running. I immediately rattle canned it when I got it. I wanted a nice, aggressive, aesthetic look. We didn't film the rattle canning process, but you just know it happened because you can see its existence. I actually do like that tube system a lot. Of all the shotguns I'm owning right now, this clearly is probably becoming one of my most favorite that I own personally. Um, is this my favorite shotgun design? No, I think that's still probably go to like the USAS 12 or the AA-12. Usually magazine fed shotguns have my heart because the violence of those is so much more aggro than having to worry about feeding a tube. Revolvers and shotguns, when it comes to like feeding the tube, makes me feel like a high stakes game of Nerf. It's kind of like what this feels like. It kind of feels like a big old Nerf gun that you grew up into. <laughs> now you got it in 12 gauge. That's kind of cool at least. It's Nerf for nothing. Uh, it says on their website of all the other stuff I saw that these tubes hold five each. So that would be a total of 15 in the gun. I've been trying to stick a, a fifth round in the tube of this particular one and have had no luck. I've been really trying to jam her in there. Got four in there right now. Really, really trying. So that is what's going on with my gun itself. I don't know what I did. I don't know if I maybe have a different model. Maybe it's newer, maybe it's older. Um, but that's essentially what's happening right now. I'm noticing another thing too, the charging handle, because you can take these out really easy, but you can also put them back in really easy. It is kind of walking out here and there. I think you're able to use this to change the gas system from low to high. Let's see how it is on the high system. Oh, I guess I need a charging handle, huh? <laughs> see how the high gas system is. Maybe I have the other way around, but it could be wrong. I feel like that's a lower recoil. Nope, that's definitely higher, okay. Oh, okay, and then we have a failure to extract. You know, 
That feels like it's on the higher gas system. It was running just fine in the low gas setting, I believe. So I'll leave her on the low because it's a little bit more pleasant to shoot. But that high gas system is nice for a liability issue. So I do like that. Minus the one failure to extract you had. Ergonomically, it feels good. When you're looking down the gun, it feels very much like a sci-fi blaster. I love having that side saddle on here just because I can. And I do think the aesthetics, I think the aesthetics are pretty nice. I like that little factor about the gun itself. It has that very much that sci-fi thing going for it that we talked about it earlier. It is very, it's tall. <laughs> It's a very tall gun. And of course, IWI with their cutlass little grip over here always adds a nice flavor to the gun itself. Now the cost of the gun, here's the question. Do you think the cost may be worth it? Because on the website for IWI itself, I think they're going for 1300. That's of course me plus taxes. Now, I of course didn't pay for this gun. I have that luxury of being a dancing monkey on the interwebs. It's a blessing and a curse. But the $1,300 price tag, that's gonna be the issue because though it does a lot of things for a shotgun, you could take that money and you'd throw it at other things for your AR-15. Say you have a nice AR-15, but you don't have an IR laser yet. Maybe you wanna throw that money towards a laser. Maybe you wanna throw it towards a better optic. So I'm not here to tell you how to spend your money, of course, but it's one of those things you have to ask yourself monetarily, is it worth it? Now, of course, shotguns have this one excellent thing going for them. They have this X factor. What is the X factor? I always talk about it. I know it's nerdy. I know it's cheesy, but I do believe certain guns have a weird little secret sauce. And the shotgun secret sauce is this little X factor of aggro nature. You do feel like a badass running around with a big old shotgun like this. You know, you got your 12 gauge, you have your slugs ready to go. We're gonna just absolutely put down a wall of lead and hate that could just remove chunks from people and repaint walls. That's what makes shotguns so enjoyable to me at least is this, I'm gonna mess you up mentality. It's like, I'm gonna get in your trench line. I'm going to assault you and there's nothing you can do about it. You stinky little German, I'm coming for you. That's like the vibe I love about the shotgun. It is like, it's like Doom Slayer. It's just something to it, man. You know it has the power. Now, of course, you being a gun guy, me being a gun guy, we both know that shotguns are actually really hard to run. And so I have a lot of respect for people that can run shotguns very well because though it is also a layman gun, it's also the expert's gun. I'm terrified. I'd be terrified of a dude that could run a pump action shotgun like a surgeon. I don't wanna mess with that guy. Like, yeah, I have an AR and I'm sure I can smoke him from distance, but if he's close to me, I'm gonna be a little scared. I'm not gonna like that. <laughs> I don't know about that. This is of course all hypothetical and it's all like in made up uh, fairyland, but it's stuff I think about, you know, doing this. So it is what it is, man. Well, this was a quick little look at the TS-12 guys. I just wanted to go over this gun because I do think she is cool. I think she has a little bit of a vibe to her. I think this is probably my new favorite shotgun that I own. It has a lot of firepower, output, ammo capacity. So of the tube fed shotguns I own, this is probably now my favorite. So we'll see unless I get some newer, cooler shotguns. But so far, this one is now the queen of the castle. King of the castle, king of the castle. All right, gentlemen, well, I got nothing else for you. If you want to support the channel, Patreon, merchandise, excellent ways to support the channel. As always, stay easy, stay breezy. I'll catch you on the flip. I'm not running out. I did legs the other day. Ugh. Why do I suck? Why do I suck? Yeah! We caught the brain bug.